A federal judge has handed Microsoft a major victory by declining to block its $69 billion takeover of video game company Activision Blizzard. Regulators were previously seeking to axe the deal because they say it will hurt competition. The FTC had originally asked the judge to stop the proposed deal, arguing it would give Microsoft exclusive access to Activision games, including the best-selling game Call of Duty. The agency's concern was that the deal would potentially limit the availability of those games on other platforms. The ruling said that the merger may not actually lessen competition, though. Activision's CEO said, quote, Our merger will benefit consumers and workers. It will enable competition. Shares of Activision Blizzard jumped 5% on the ruling. Bank of America on Tuesday agreed to pay $250 million in fines and compensation. This is to settle claims that the bank systematically double-charged customer fees and withheld promised credit card perks and opened accounts without customer authorization. Of the $250 million, $100 million in restitution will be paid to harmed consumers and another $150 million in civil penalties. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau said that Bank of America reaped hundreds of millions of dollars by charging multiple fees to con consumers who did not have enough funds in their accounts from February 2018 into February 2022. The Bureau has launched a crackdown on a range of so-called junk fees, including overdraft and non-sufficient fund fees. It says lenders unfairly charge customers for banking services. And in June, U.S. small business confidence reached a seven-month high as concerns about the economic outlook diminished and sales expectations improved. This is according to the National Federation of Independent Business Survey. The Small Business Optimism Index rose by 1.6 points to 91 points. Small businesses expressed less pessimism about the near-term economic prospects, with the General Business Conditions Outlook Index climbing by 10 points. Sales expectations also improved, with a smaller percentage of business owners anticipating weaker sales in the coming months. However, the tight labor market continued to drive concerns about inflation. Although inflation remained a top concern for small business owners, the percentage of owners labeling it as their biggest headache decreased compared to the previous month and a year ago. Labor supply remained a significant concern as small businesses struggled with the cost and quality of labor. Now, despite the improved outlook, the index remained below the 49-year average, indicating ongoing challenges. The NFIB survey also highlighted that hiring slowed in June while wage growth remained strong. Now, here's the question. Is the Magic Kingdom losing its magic? Data suggests that visitor numbers at Disney's U.S. parks have been dwindling this summer. Once bustling with families, Disney's parks are experiencing an unusual summer lull. Visitors seeing shorter wait times, which is something rarely seen during peak season. Experts point to recent price hikes and operational changes as possible reasons for the slowdown. Moreover, the company has been grappling with a variety of challenges, including a political row with Florida's governor and losses from streaming services. It's a roller coaster ride for Disney, but it remains to be seen if they can win back the magic. U.S. banking giants are scheduled to report second quarter results starting this week as the industry tries to move past the turmoil caused by the crisis in regional lenders earlier this year. An S&P index of U.S. bank stocks has fallen more than 9% this year. This is as investors fret about the effects of high interest rates and a looming downturn. So here are some trends to watch out for this earnings season. First, is commercial real estate. Investors will scrutinize disclosures on banks' commercial real estate exposure, particularly on office loans. Commercial real estate has come under pressure from rising interest rates and the rise of remote working that emptied out many office buildings. Big U.S. banks' commercial real estate portfolios put in a surprisingly good performance during the Federal Reserve's annual health checks, with losses declining slightly versus the last year. But regional banks have had to cut their exposure to the beleaguered sector by tightening standards and reducing the number of loans. And another thing to look out for is deposit trends. Deposit costs have been at the forefront of Wall Street's attention after bank runs in March highlighted customers' ability to pull the deposits quickly from banks. 
To lure customers, banks will face high pressure to pay higher rates on deposits, which would erode their profits, analysts have said. Investors will also look at deposits to gauge the industry's stability after the turbulence in March. Another point is net interest income. Investors will also focus on net interest income, which is a closely watched measure of how much money banks make from lending. A contraction in net interest income could spell the end of a boom for lenders that have reaped the benefits of the Federal Reserve's interest rate increases since last year. And net interest rate income forecasts will be key to understanding banks' outlook for future profits. And one more thing to look out for is headcount. Wall Street giants, including Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, have laid off staff to keep a tight lid on expenses as economic uncertainty weighs on their trading and advisory businesses. Market participants will be watching to see if executives give more commentary on staffing in the sluggish environment.